This video will cover how to create dynamic interactive user interfaces or HMIs with WebHMI. If you're not familiar with the term, an HMI is a human machine interface or just another way of saying user interface. WebHMI is built upon open web standards and is platform agnostic. This means that you can use any web development tools and integrate WebHMI into any web platform such as ASP.NET, .NET MVC, JSP, PHP, Ruby on Rails, and others. If your web application can generate HTML and serve up JavaScript, WebHMI will work with it. This model of providing open development tools allows you to decide how best to incorporate OAS products into your environment. It also eases the pain of integration by working with what you already have instead of dictating a major platform shift for any single application. And if you're like most developers, more than one platform is already being used in your organization, so having tools that work with all of them is valuable. Using open standards means that there's tons of community support for all the underlying technologies, and a large group of developers able to hit the ground running with our tools. WebHMI also utilizes a direct line of communication between the client and OAS server. Once the web page is loaded, the client taps into real-time OAS data without putting additional strain on your web application server. This configuration also allows you to get started with little more than a text editor and a network connection, which is exactly what we'll be doing in this demo. So what you see here is a demonstration of what you can build with WebHMI. You can see this demo at opcweb.com. In this demo, we show how you can display images, text, uh, changing buttons, colors, the look and feel of a page, and it's all interactive based on the live data coming from the OES server. I'm also demonstrating how We've got two different web browsers open showing the exact same page and how interactivity on one page affects all users connected. That's because the change on the page isn't based on what the user is doing, it's based on the values coming from the server. So for example, if a user clicks a button to change a value, the information goes up to the server, the value is changed on the server, and then every connected session gets that changed value and then updates the screen when the value changes. This ensures that you're not seeing out-of-date values or you're not seeing misinformation. You only see the changes when they've already occurred on the server. So in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use code and markup to start to create uh, an HMI or a user interface. We won't be doing something as complex as the tank and valve example that you see in the demo on opcweb.com, but you'll get a sense of how easy it is to develop with these tools once you've got some HTML and some JavaScript skills under your belt. So let's get started with setting up the server and then getting into some code. So our first step is going to be registering a listener on the, the server side. So this is done by opening up the service control utility and what you'll see there is the HTML HMI registration. Before you do anything, stop all of the services. And once they're all stopped, we're going to go down to the HTML HMI registration section and just click on register. You can use the defaults for now, but in the future you can change the host name and port number. Once the registration succeeds, you can start all the services back up again. We're also going to quickly jump into the Open Automation Software Configuration Utility and select Configure Tags. I just want to show you which tags we're going to be referencing in our code. These will be under the local host, so we'll expand the local node. And the two tags we're going to be referencing are the pump, which is a Boolean value, which will indicate whether a pump is turned on or off. And then we're also going to be looking at a random value. This is coming from our built-in simulator that just generates a random integer. This is useful for testing live data coming through because the value is constantly changing. So now that we've seen these values, let's start writing some code. So the code we're writing is going to depend on some libraries, which you'll be able to find in the installation directory. So go under the program files, open automation software, And under here, you go to opcsystems.net, and you'll open up HTML HMI or Web HMI, depending on the version you've got, and you'll find a JS directory. In here, there are two items that we're going to be copying. 
there's the lib directory and the opc lib min in the lib directory there's a jquery library that's what the code depends on for communication and object manipulation and then the opc lib min is the open automation software library for web hmi so we'll copy these two and we'll paste them in a new folder on the desktop that's where we'll be doing all of our work for now We'll just call this web HMI test. So the text editor that we're going to be using is Sublime Text. This is a very popular text editor that does syntax highlighting for many languages. We could use something like Visual Studio or any other integrated IDE, but what I'd like to do is demonstrate how this can be done with just a simple text editor. So I'm just setting this up so that we can see the sidebar that shows the files in the project. We're only going to be working on a single file, which we'll be saving in that same folder. And we'll call it test.html. I'll paste in some basic code and I'll explain how that works. So as you see in this code, we've got two references. One is the jQuery library, and the other is the OPC libmin, which is the web HMI library. I've also got a piece of script in there that is OPC underscore config. It has a token value, which is used for authentication. We're not going to cover authentication in this demo, but you can just put this token in there as the default. And the server URL, this is what we're pointing to for communications. Right now I've got localhost 58725 that we set up in the service control utility. So I'll open up the file and we'll see it execute. So we're going to open this up in Chrome. And then we'll right click on the browser and select inspect so that we can see the debug window. And you can see down here that it says Total tag zero. That means that the library is up and running. It scanned the page and we have nothing on the page for it to process. So we're going to add in a couple of items here. The first is going to be a div and it's going to be bound to the pump value that we looked at in the configure tags application. And we'll put in a special attribute called OPC tag text. This is going to control the text. This is going to bind to the text property of this div. And we're going to set up tag and pump value. You'll see that this is JSON formatted. And with that simple attribute, we just refresh the page and that binds directly to the pump.value on the server. We'll open up the configure tags utility again. And we can see this happening in real time when we change the value. So we'll go down to pump. And you'll see that the value is true, and it's the same value shown on screen. If we change this on the server, you'll also see it change right in the web page. We didn't have to refresh. We didn't have to do anything. We can keep changing this, and it will keep changing back and forth. So now we know that we've got communication bidirectional between the client and the server. So now we're going to add in another item. We'll just copy this first one. You have to make sure that you've got a unique ID for each item. That's how it's bound to the server. And this one we're going to bind to the random dot value. Now this is a value that's changing a lot over time. And you can see that happening right on screen now. So that's great if we want to see real-time values, but what if we want to set a value on the server or change a value on the server? So I'll add a button, and we'll give that a unique ID also. 
we're going to use this button to toggle the value of the pump dot value tag and this uses a unique attribute opc tag set and we'll tell it which tag we're going to be binding to this is also going to be bound to the pump dot value and this also has another attribute called config and in here we're going to create another JSON object with some key value pairs. EVT stands for event, and that's the event we're monitoring. And in this case, it's going to be the click. And then set, which determines what gets set when the event is fired. And what we're going to do is put in the word toggle. This is a keyword, and that means it will send the value of toggle up to the server, which is useful for Booleans if you just want to toggle them back and forth. Refresh, we've got that button now showing up, and as we click it, we can see that it's toggling the value back and forth. Now that's not changing on the client, it's changing on the server, and then the server is updating the client in a round trip. So what if we want to combine these things? Instead of having one label that shows a value and a button that changes the value, what we can do is have the button show the current value as well as affect the current value. So we'll get rid of that pump val label, and we're going to just move the OPC tag text down to the button. So we have multiple attributes, one which affects the display, and another that responds to events. So that's useful. So now we see the value in the real time. When you click it, the value changes, so it updates the button as well. But in most cases, we want to have something a little bit better than just the raw true value or false value showing up in the button. We want to format that text so that it displays something a little bit more meaningful. So we're going to add a config to this OPC tag text. And we'll add a formats element. And in the formats, what we're going to do is add in a key of string because we're going to be formatting a string. And then we can type any text we want in here and put a placeholder. In this case, I'm just going to write pump colon and then put a placeholder of curly braces with a zero. And that'll be the place that the value coming from pump.value is going to be inserted. So we get a formatted string. So whenever we change that value, you see that that placeholder gets replaced with the, the real value. That's good, that's one step forward. Let's make it even better. Instead of saying true and false, the pump is either on or off, so let's display on or off. Also in the formats, we have some keys. One is bool underscore f and bool underscore t. Respectively, these are the Boolean false value and the Boolean true value. So for false, we're gonna say off and for True, we're going to say on. So now you see that the formatting is taking place as well as the replacing of the Boolean true and false. So the technique we've been using up to this point is adding attributes to HTML elements. This technique is helpful, especially if you've got an existing web application and you just want to add some behaviors to your existing elements. But what if you want more control or if you're designing something from scratch where you need to programmatically affect changes on screen or respond to events? What we've done is provided a programmatic interface in JavaScript for you to respond to callback events, see when data has changed on the server, update elements on your own, and also issue commands that change values on the server. And we'll show you how to do that. Now that I've cleared out all of the HTML attributes, we can develop the same functionality programmatically. First, we add a refresh callback reference in our OPC config. And I'm just going to say that it's going to be pointing to update data. This is a function we're going to define right below here. And this function will be called every single time data changes on the server. And to see it working, I'm going to just temporarily put in a console log line. What this will do is it'll fire off and write update data every time the data refreshes. So if you look in the debug window, you see nothing's happening. That's because we don't have any tags we're monitoring. The system will not update 
or a callback to the server unless we're monitoring tags. To do this programmatically, we add a watch tags array to the config, and we list every single tag that we want to monitor. In this case, we're going to be monitoring the same two tags, pump.value and random.value. Go back and refresh now, and what we should see is update data being called. So now that we know that the communication from the client to the server is working, we're monitoring those two tags, now we can start making changes on screen. So we'll get rid of this debug, and we'll set up some variables. We're going to set up a variable for each one of the values that we're monitoring. So we'll have one pval for pump value. And the way we get a value, the current value, is we fire off opc.getValue, and we just pass in the tag. And the same thing for random value. We'll just call this variable rval. Fire off get value, random.value. And using some jQuery, so if you're not familiar with jQuery, I highly recommend looking up jQuery syntax. The pound means we're going to be looking at the item whose ID is random value. The HTML function means to fill in the contents of that tag with that value. And we'll do the same thing. We'll look for the element whose ID is pump set. We'll fill in the value by concatenating a string with pump colon and then pval. So there, we're back to some of our original functionality. But we want to format that string the same way we were doing before. And we do a quick test. We just check to see if the value is true. And if the value is true, we are going to return on. And if it's false, we'll return off. A quick check shows that this is working. So we're almost there. We just have to put in a click handler so that when we click on the button, we actually update the value. The way we do this is, again, using some jQuery. We put in a callback for the document ready. This is a common jQuery pattern where we put in a callback function, an anonymous function, and this only executes when the document is loaded. And with when the document loads, we're going to then bind a click handler on the pump set, which is the button. And we do that by executing click, and then we pass it a function to execute when that click happens. So in order to change a value on the server, we just fire off opc.setValue. We give it the name of the tag that we're going to change, and then the value we're going to give it. And again, we can just use toggle, since it's a Boolean, and that will toggle the Boolean back and forth. Save that, and we'll refresh. So now we click the button, and we can see the value changing. So as you see, you can use both methods. You can use the attribute method, or you can use the programmatic access to achieve the same results. For more information about our products, including WebHMI, WebTrend, and WebAlarm, go to openautomationsoftware.com. You can find all of our documentation at openautomationsoftware.com slash online help. And in particular, go to WebHMI and look at the HTML attribute reference and programming reference to learn more about all of the attributes you can apply to elements, as well as all of the JavaScript code that you can execute with the API that we've provided.